so you'd mentioned um, your long-term plans for the Bosque and uh, building a community here. Like, what would you like to see long-term? Right. Well, a lot of people, when they want to make an intentional community, get a bunch of people together. Sometimes they don't even know what they're going to build, and they try and build it. There's sure. immediate conflicts, and there's all the usual problems. Uh, my method of avoiding some of those is to define the space and its use, define a lot of the culture, have people coming through transiently to develop that culture. Mm -hmm. But some of those people are going to want to stay longer. Mm -hmm. And that culture is going to be good for them. It's going to serve them, not just for a week, a month, or something. But some of them want to stay for years. They want to be part of the economic system. They might have kids. So that is the goal, is not just to have it be a, a laboratory short term, but to implement longer term real community stuff. So that means that uh, we need to plan for old people, kids. Um, we need to look at real sustainability. And that sustainability goes beyond me. So one of my goals, and I'm going to die, right? So I can't just have a system built on Brian. I need to have um, other people involved and systems in place so that, so that the place continues to function. And the day I die, people say, well, that guy was interesting, you know? <laughs> And we're going to continue, and the next day, there's still food, there's still systems operating, there's still some people coming in and visiting. Business mm -hmm. as usual. Yeah, <laughs> business as usual. And so, so that's the goal, is, is that I really, I can die with a smile on my face if I know that I made a real functioning alternative. Which is really fantastic. Because a lot of people think about that, but no one I know, except for you now, <laughs> has ever even attempted to create something. I mean, that's like a big dream, and I mean, you're doing it. That's pretty amazing. I will try to keep that in mind day to day when I'm... You're amazing! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I do like to hear that. And yeah. I, I need to hear it um, because I mean, it is challenging. And, yeah. And I do, I do get people, I get threats online. I get people telling me that I'm doing things bad. No matter what I do, I'm going to hear that. Really? Oh, yeah. And that's just how it is. I mean, you get YouTube commenters, you get whatever. And, and, I, and I'm really, especially as I'm going more and more public with this, and publishing more and more on YouTube and writing more online, I'm just accepting that a large percentage of people are going to say, well, that doesn't fit with my reality, more wrong and bad. Yeah. And I just need to say, okay, I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm going to focus on the people who love it, and I'm going to keep having a great time doing it. Don't read the comments section. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. Yeah. It never it never ends in a good place for me, that's for sure. <laughs> um, um, how do we use social media and why? Yeah, how do you use social yeah. media and why? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Uh, any project like this or anybody's um, intellectual attempts at doing things or uh, uh, creating culture in any way used to be very isolated. I mean, people used to do this thing where they wrote on paper and sent it to someone, <laughs> you know. And then, you know, in the 60s, hippies started having concepts of, like, global consciousness, and it's all being connected. Mm -hmm. And really, in a pragmatic, real way, we are arriving at forms of global consciousness. Never actually thought about it that yeah, way. It's, yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> I mean, the fact that, you know, I can read what some kid in Ethiopia is writing about his life and his thoughts on the world, and then that can influence me is fantastic. Yeah. We all now have television stations. Yeah. We all now can, can share our... our lowest depths of pain and our, and our highest optimism with everybody. And so, so I'm going to take advantage of it. Yeah. I have I like photography and video. Everything fits together. So I want to be out there online a lot. I want a virtual Brian out there talking to the world and I want to be hearing what they're saying too. Yeah. I mean, and, and just for people who are maybe not even considering coming and living off the grid, just to, to have that information out there um, is, is, you know, it's a learning experience. Yeah. And this is true for the participants as well. Mm -hmm. uh, not every participant that comes here is on camera. Mm -hmm. But for many participants that come here, they're going to be part of those experiments where we're going to be recording us making cheese or recording us figuring out a way to use wood more efficiently. Mm -hmm. And so they then...
so the, 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 one of the great ways that people can participate right now in this project is to go on social media on YouTube and subscribe, go on the fa Facebook pages, go on anywhere else that you can find us. Quora especially is written stuff, so that's some of our densest information. I spent hours and hours writing on Quora. And like stuff, spread it, um, disagree with it, that's fine. Add Even better than disagreeing is add your better ideas. Sure. So be useful in your, in your disagreement. And, uh, and be inspired that, that you too are part of this thinking process. So social media is it, and, and I use these expansive terms like global consciousness, but it's not that crazy. That's what we're doing. No, in fact, that's so <laughs> funny that you mentioned that. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really what it is. Yeah. Essentially, the world is saying hello to itself for the first time. Which and, is wild. And what's really nice about that is it's not one-to-many communication. It's not just the authorities in control. Mm -hmm. Little brother's in control. We're all, we're all able to do this. For now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gotten so cheap. I mean, you know, cameras are cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can get a decent camera now and film anything. About that. And people make movies with iPhones. <laughs> True. Do you want to talk about food? Yeah, let's talk about food. Okay. Let's, about let's talk about food. Uh, yeah. What do you eat here? Um, that's changed over time. Sure. Uh, the main goal uh, with our food philosophy mm -hmm is to grow what we can, mm -hmm. and we want to grow that using no irrigation or outside fertilizers. Uh, so we want to grow in the natural rain cycle, that we know where our food came from. What we can't grow, we want to eat locally. Mm -hmm. This is a great agricultural region, the state of Michoacan in Mexico, where we've got hotter lands and colder lands and different climates, and so we can get papayas and mangoes and coconuts and all this stuff, and we can buy it just down to local market in town. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to eat locally. We want to eat a lot of fresh foods. So I'd like to, to eat mostly, um, you know, I mean, kind of raw vegan is, is one fairly hardcore direction, but I'd like to be in that general direction. Sure. Um, and we want to also be very conscious of every single ingredient we use. So I actually made a spreadsheet of all the ingredients we use. And we're going to investigate every single one. Where does it come from? How much does it cost? Not just the monetary cost, but what's the environmental cost? Mm -hmm. What's the cost for our health? What is the labor cost? And what's the effect of people making? For example, coffee and chocolate mm -hmm. often use slave labor. So if we're going to eat those lovely things, we need to figure out, OK, uh, how can we make chocolate? How can we grow coffee? Or if we can't do that, where can we get locally from people we like? We like how they live, their kinds of land. And this is an extreme consciousness thing that, that we can all be practicing. And I, I think this is actually, for, for anybody watching this, it's the number one most powerful thing that they can start tomorrow on affecting the world around them. It'll affect their body, it affects their economy, it affects the environment. So think about every, every food decision they make. That's a big task right there. Yeah, well, let's, what's an example of, of well, something that... Um, in terms of your own economics, uh, are you going to eat out, or mm -hmm. are you going to learn to cook? Yeah. And I spent a lot of money when I was younger, and I was busy working. I got my excuses. I was busy working a lot, and I never really made a lot of food for myself. Yeah. And so I spent tens of thousands of dollars. Well, now they have Grubhub. Have you heard of that? Grubhub? I have not heard of Grubhub. So you just pick up your phone and you say, I want Mexican and then Mexican food comes to your house. Wow. You don't even have to put on pants. That so, does yeah. sound nice. Right, but the consequence is a bag, three styrofoam containers, and all that crap. And, and the gasoline that was used. The gasoline that was used. Individually. You individually. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I do, I'm astounded at the wonderfulness of the world that we live in and how creative we are. Yeah, here, we're going to have food stored. But that's actually another thing that we're going to do. Is uh, that we want to in terms of what's good for the whole society. Sure. And that uh, we should have food stored. There will always be a natural disaster. There will always be some kind of social unrest. And if most of the people are storing a lot of food, that disaster will not have very significant consequences by comparison if you didn't have food stored. Mm -hmm. An example the Mormons. Yeah. If I understand correctly, there's a tradition of storing like a year's worth of food. You know, so you have wheat and these things all stored. Mm -hmm. I doubt all Mormons do that. Sure. But even if a lot of them do it, 
if there's an earthquake, they don't starve. Right. They're not fighting over food. They're going out and fixing the road and the buildings and helping each other out. Whereas if you live in a society where no one has food stored and there's a disaster, within three days you have a serious problem. Yeah, well, everyone's sitting there like, why isn't Grubhub working? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, and you, with water as well. Um, water is a fairly important food. Sure. Uh, we capture water from the rain here and have it stored. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to worry about a disruption of the water delivery process. Now, in 19, I think, no, uh, in 2005, there was a water disruption in part of Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Well, within three days, people were, were hijacking water trucks with guns because if your child does not have water, your priority is to get water. And so what we want to do is redesign our society to have food security. We want to have plants growing in the vine. I even plant things I don't want to eat that I don't like, but they grow without any resources. Because if I ever am desperate, I and my neighbors will have food. You mentioned something about that before, about um, choosing not only, and now you're not only setting something up for you, but your surrounding neighbors. And that seems like such a We're so disconnected with our neighbors because we don't have to connect to them. Right. But it's really important to make sure everyone has something. Right. And th this is very interesting on a couple levels. I mean, on the local level, I could be like a survivalist and make sure I have all my stuff in my bunker, need some guns too. Because <laughs> if there's a silent disruption and my neighbors don't have food, they're just going to come take my food. Yeah. Not to mention, these are my friends. And so what I need to do now even if they don't have the foresight for this, is be planting in the region so that we have lots of food available if there's a real need. And it might not be the tastiest, that's okay. On the worldwide level, mm -hmm. this is also true. And there's a lot of people who, who talk about justice, economic justice and things, and I'll skip the politics, but they're not really in a legitimate way looking at the inequalities around the world. Sure. And that's, and I'm, I'm talking about the shirt I'm wearing and the, everything we use. We are taking advantage of people in, in economic different systems. We're letting them poison their land. We're having their families suffer in ways that we would never let our neighbors do. No. And so, so it's not just me and my neighbors, but it's us of the industrial world and our worldwide neighbors. And I feel like back to social media and um, the internet, I mean, I feel like those injustices are becoming more clear. And I would hope that, you know, you know, peace man, I would hope that <laughs> our, our collective consciousness then, you know, we can all yeah. figure this shit out. But I don't know how it'll happen, but, but I'm happy I, I have a project I can work on. Yes. And I'm happy that I can be hopefully part of helping wealthy people use less resources so we can be on a more equal playing field. Yes. Okay.